Now, section 3.4 is about how to apply the rotation matrix. What does the rotation matrix mean? I repeat that, we had that already discussed, and how to apply the rotation matrix to the stress tensor. And then I will make a bridge back to the previous section also. Now, matrix of rotation matrix or the transformation matrix comes from that you have a coordinate system one, two, and three, one, x1, x2, x3, e1, e2, e3. Okay, and we have a new coordinate system e1 prime, x1 prime, x2 prime, x3 prime. So the wide dashes and the small dashes are respectively old and new coordinate system. The directional cosines, as I sketched you before on whiteboard, are coming from these angles. The cosine of the angle between these two vectors is one if the vectors are identical, it's smaller than one if the vectors are not parallel, and it's it can also be minus one, by the way, and it's zero if the two vectors would. So that's all possible. Everything between plus one and minus one is possible for the RPI components. Now, the old coordinate system, remember, this is the cube, the stress cube, which we are always sketching, and the dashed lines inside the cube are parallel to the old coordinate system. The dashed lines in, inside the new cube are parallel to the new coordinate system unit vectors. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is how the stress cube changes when you change the coordinate system. Changing the coordinate system, this is the sketch. Now, next, uh, why doesn't it work? Oops, yes. Now, the surface perpendicular to the x1 prime axis okay so this is now combining section 3.2 and 3.3 we have the triangle we have a new cut based on the old coordinate system and we choose the new cut such that it is actually parallel such that the normal vector of the cut is parallel to the new x1 direction. So this is what is written here. So we, we make a choice. Okay, then when you calculate the components from the definition of R, you can convince yourself that N1, so the one vector with an I component, one refers to the full vector, I refers to the three components of this vector. Okay, so that is actually the R1I components of the matrix, of the transformation matrix. Okay, and using 3.2 with Cauchy's formula, we can now say Pj is sigma ij R1i. So this is taking the stress tensor, it's using one row or one column of the transformation matrix, and this is giving us a new vector on the left-hand side. And this new vector, pj, are the components. Superscript 1 refers to the first direction in the new coordinate system. Okay, so the subscripts and superscripts have different meaning, as indicated also by the brackets which we put there. Okay, so after the rotation, after the transformation, rotation or transformation, that I use the synonymous. Uh, after the rotation, you always should look what is on the left hand side, what is on the right hand side. On the left hand side, prime means it's the stress tensor component 1q in the new coordinate system. This one happens to be equal to the stress vector component. This one we got from the equation above. This is geometry and definitions. Okay. And uh, this one actually, we insert Cauchy's formula again here. So take a look at Cauchy's formula. We insert it into here, and that gives us this second element and the last equal is just reshuffling so we have one transformation matrix we have a second transformation matrix and sigma ij now here what are the free indices and what are the dummy indices the dummy indices are jj you sum over those the ii you sum over those so this is a double sum the free index is q free index is q on the right and on the left you must have the same number of free indices on right and left Okay, and one is just because we picked the one direction. We made the choice to look 
into the new one direction and this is where the one comes from here and here okay and you can do that for the two and the three directions also so replace the one by a two replace the one by a three and give it the index p okay again i i summation over j j summation over those are the dummy indices p q are independent free indices on the right hand side and on the left hand side and this is already the full definition of the transformed stress tensor because if the stress transforms this way we know that we are allowed to call it a tensor okay so this was dry mathematics this is the horrible mathematics what of what you have to calculate when you write down every of these pieces and elements one by one by one so this is three times three terms and each term has three factors which you have to multiply with each other so that's this is a lot of writing work and that is why it's much nicer if you have tensors and transformation matrices which have a lot of zero so many calculations now as i said before the computer most of the time will do the work for you in practice in a finite element solver it will have to do a lot of those calculations that is what computers are for but in my course you I want to teach you to do it one, two, three, four times by yourself so that you know what's going on. OK, now, if there is a transformation in one direction, then you can also use the transformation in the reverse direction. And that one is by exchanging the, tra the transformation matrix with the trend post. OK, now, that was a short section on transformations. You will try those transformations and in the next section after the break i will come back to equilibrium equations and for that one we will again need a little bit more math end of this section <laughs>